All right, Coach Andrusy, welcome to the uh, Barbarian Hour short. Uh, go and check uh, barbarianapparel.com out. And uh, our partners, Josh Sasfi down in the Cincinnati area. Uh, Coach, big match coming up. First match of the year for Kent State. And you get to head up the road to Cleveland, Ohio versus Josh Moore and the Vikings. How excited are you guys? Pretty excited. We wrestled already this year, though. Who did you guys wrestle? We wrestled at West Virginia. We wrestled West Virginia, um, Virginia Tech, and then we wrestled OU in about nine matches, I think. So the OU one, was that just for the RPI matches, and, and was it not essentially starters, or what was it? No, it was – well, it was a lot of our starters. I think he had some COVID issues, and then they had like one or two guys get injured – or not injured, just it was a long day, especially the first competition. But uh, – so he, he had a kind of a mixed team. I think that um, – I don't know. He had quite a few guys out with COVID, so he, but he sent a team there anyways to wrestle Virginia Tech and, and West Virginia. Was it in yeah, Morgantown? What's that? Was it in Morgantown? Yes, it was in Morgantown. Okay, so that was okay. Your first one actually got canceled at App State in uh, Boone, North Carolina, right? Yes, that was t- we, the, the first weekend of the, the new year. Okay, and it was second or third that day. Yeah. Okay, so that one got canceled, but did, and then you guys lost both the duels against WVU and Tech, right? Yeah, we do. Yep. Okay, so you're looking to get in the win column, and it's a Mid American Conference match, uh, Coach. That first one getting canceled. That was COVID issues, right? That was COVID issues, but we. Yes, it was COVID issues, but at the end of the day, we didn't have COVID issues. But the way the testing was read, we made some. We our administration made some mistakes um, reading it, so it got canceled. It shouldn't have. We should have been able to travel, but we didn't. At the end of the day, it wasn't a huge deal because we got. Three matches in last week, and uh, this week isn't isn't a dual meet. It's a round robin. Um, no team score is kept. Uh, the MAC just came back and put in some rules in place that you can't wrestle more than ten extra matches. And I know that uh, Josh has got a lot of different rules that he's got to deal with over there in Cleveland State. So his goal is just to get his guys as many matches as possible. So we're doing like a round robin round robin action with all of our guys. But so starters like, are going to wrestle starters, and I'm going to keep track of the dual score, just yeah. so you know. Okay, that, that's fine. Is that all right with you? That's fine with me. That's yes. Awesome. Okay. So when you look at it, up and down the lineup, I saw Andrew McNally, or as I like to call him since middle school, McNasty, the transfer from Eastern Michigan from down the road in Uniontown. He's ranked uh, 10th in a couple polls, and he cracked the top 10 in one of them at, at 9, right? Well, top, top 10 is 10, right? Yep. But uh, he's, uh, he's in there at nine in one of the polls, and that guy is – he's a workman-like performer for you. He's qualified for the NCAs. Andrew McNally's got to be the leader in the team. Would you agree with that? As far as wrestling days, yes. He doesn't say a whole lot. He's a really quiet kid and just – not that, not that he, he marches to his own beat, but he's not one to go in there and get under – you know, get on people for, for work. And he works pretty hard, um, but he isn't going to get under people. He isn't going to get on them for it. Um, but as far as when he goes out there and wrestles and things we exa- use an example of a lot on our team, he's our guy, no doubt about that. And he's 174 pounds. Is he qualified at 84 for you as well? No. He qualified at 174 two times. Two times at 74, okay. And did he ever- no, – you're wrong, you're wrong. Right? So the first year, his freshman year, he was at 184. He was 184, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so the first year, he wrestled 174. He, re- he transferred. We, we thought – our team was going to be better if it, with him at 184, and he was cutting literally no weight. He was smaller than everybody. He walked around at 180, like in the middle of the year. It was He was just too small. So then last year he cut to 174, and it's tough, at, tough for him at first, but by the middle of the year, well, which this year there really is no middle of the year, um, he's making the weight easy. So he, he's, he's struggling a little bit, but he's definitely a 174-pounder. Okay, so Cleveland State knocked you off last year in the duel, Okay. They beat you on, ironically enough, Coach Andrusy, a, a control of the mat call. And um, I believe you would I, – I hate to bring it up, but it's, it's what happened, Coach. It's what happened. Yeah, we, Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Just hold on. You're 100% right. I'm 100% right. We got it on video if anybody needs to see it. If, but, if it doesn't happen, we win by criteria, I think. That, yeah. that's, that's exactly correct, Coach. Correct. So two of your former coaches are up the road, up I-77, in Woodling Gym, uh, Clint Musser, 
who was huge and instrumental, I know, in, in the, the development of a couple of your All-Americans. I know he was the world to Ian Miller, you know, so that's near and dear to me. And Josh, you know, Josh helped you guys really get into where you guys had guys that could believe they could be All-Americans. So these guys were really huge and instrumental to your development of Kent State wrestling. What's it like to sit across the mat from Clint Musser and Josh Moore? It's wrestling. It's coaching. It's, you know, it's not that much different. Um, Josh, I think with, with Clint, I think he was here for a year or two, maybe if I'm correct, uh, definitely two years. I don't think it was longer than two years because he got the job at, uh, um, down American, with, uh, American. American. So he wasn't here very long. And then Josh, Josh was here for, I want to say eight or nine years, maybe 10 years. I don't know the exact time. So it's, it's a long time to, to, you know, to be, to be an assistant. And, uh, ultimately what it was is he had a lot of alpha males in one room at the time. And, you know, Matt Hill was in there too. So we had a, we had a, a very, very, very good coaching staff and, you know, a lot of alpha males in the room and, and our teams did great under all those guys. So it was, you know, I don't want to say it was, it was Clint Musser only that, you know, that got, that made Ian Miller what he was, because I, I would think that Matt Hill had a lot to do with that as well. Um, like I said, it, it takes everybody when you're trying to build a good program. Just, I couldn't do it myself, just like Josh couldn't do it himself over there, you know, without Clint. And just like Matt isn't doing it by himself over there in Edinburgh. It takes a – you want to put together a really, really good product, you need to have really, really good assistance. And the more assistance you have, the better off you'll be. And with, with Clint, he was actually a volunteer assistant that we paid a stipend to. He was just trying to get back into coaching. So it was, it was great timing for us. He lived in the area, came up. I think he was at two or three practices a week, if not more, during some of the time period. And uh, – it was great having him. And like I said, I, I know that when he was at American and he was cut, his wife got a job back here, I was trying to figure out a way to get him on my staff. It just didn't work out. He ended up going to Cleveland State. Okay. So up and down the lineup, you know, we, we talked about McNally, but who are we going to see out as far as starters? Like right now, if the MAC tournament was right now, who will you guys send out as your starter, quote yep. unquote? At 125, 33, 41, 49, 57, 65, we already know 74, 84, 97, happy. Who, who are we going to see? Five is Jake Ferry. He started for us for two years, redshirted last year, and uh, Russell beat the kid from West Virginia. Yeah, I saw that. Carndale. He beat Carndale. I saw that. Yep. Beat him uh, four to three in a really – it was a, it was a perfect Jake, Jake Ferry match. So he wrestled great. Um, last year – at one point, he was ranked, or his RPI ranking was in the top 10 in the country. So if we would have pulled him out of redshirt at some point, and he wrestled in the MAC tournament, uh, he wasn't nationally ranked because he wasn't in. He wasn't one of the guys. He wasn't. You didn't put him in it as your starter, so they couldn't yeah. nationally rank him. But it, it, you know, you, you have an RPI, and, you, and you're ranked. You bring a spot. Yes. Um, but he was a top 10 RPI guy. You know, for most of the year, just because of how well he did in open tournaments, he wrestled in like six of them and won five of them. So he made some great strides last year. At the end of the day, they are all only open tournaments, so it is a little bit different. But uh, he's come a long way from where he was two years ago. And like I said, he beat a really good kid. Hopefully he can continue along that path in this shortened year to impress enough people to get to the national tournaments. I think he's a guy that's probably anywhere from 20 to 30 ranked. Hopefully that hopefully the NCAA will figure that out at some point in the next six weeks here. It's really important for him, I think. 133, Fenton or Gold? Who are we going to see as the guy right now? Well, Pat Gold has beat, it beat him off in a wrestle-off. Um, they both wrestled last week. When you, If you watch, I, I think the, the Pat Gold match is on ESPN+. Plus. He wrestled very, very well his first two periods. And then the third period, he just mentally crashed. And when I say, like, you see it in the match. First time he's wrestled in a long time, very nervous cutting weight, all the things that, that you try not to happen in your first competition happened for him. Wrestled really well in the second match um, against uh, um, the OU guy, the 33 OU guy, before he ended up getting medically DQ'd out. But um, wrestled really well against him. So I, he, and, he, and he's beat Fenton in the wrestle-off. So he's our guy we're going with. The one good thing is Fenton will be wrestling as well. And, and if, if there comes a point where we have to make a change, we'll make a change. But right now we're going with Pat Gold in the short year. 141. Um, one for them would be Avery Mutchler. Uh, once again, exact, they're roommates, they're best friends. They wrestled last week. He wrestled last week, and like I said, wrestled pretty well um, for a freshman that, that has never wrestled in the dual meet before. So um, I, 
I, he's going to be really good. It just depends on how fast he can pick this up and how fast he can conquer some of these mental things and cutting the weight and doing all the things that you have to do to be a, a great Division One wrestler. He's from the same high school as the Deans, I want to say. Lowell, Michigan, isn't he? Yep, yeah, that's correct. That's exactly correct. Yep. Yeah, so obviously some, some expectations at that program. 149, yep. who the Flash is going to send out? Cody Kamara. Um, Kamara. And, Kamara's back. He's back. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He's gotten better. Like I said, he didn't have the best first match against the West Virginia kid, but then beat the Virginia Tech kid, so he, he wrestled better. Um, I think a lot of it comes with him just is just getting going and, and – and, and, like I said, it's a shortened year. You don't, have, you don't have time for bad matches. He had a bad first match, but he wrestled better the second and third match. He so, is from the same high school as Matt Hill. Yes, he is. That's correct. You 57. know a lot of useless information. I know stuff. Okay. 57. 57 will either be Ian Sen Ian Sens right now is our guy. Um, we got a guy named Nick Calasarjo who came out of Redshirt, who's more naturally a 157 pounder than, than Ian. But Ian's our guy right now. Um, Ian's probably a 49-pounder that we bumped up. We really just don't have a 57-pounder. We had some, some freshmen that we just felt that the best thing that uh, could happen is we, we keep him out of the bubble. And we had a kid that just decided to, to end his career. Probably would have been our starter at 57. So Ian sends our guy, and he's going to just get better as the year goes on. He's a hardworking kid. And like I said, we'll, we'll put him in there and see how he does. All right, 65, I want to say I saw the Ottawa County Strangler, James Lamangi. He is our man right now. So we're, we're, if, if the Mac tournament was this weekend, he'd be the one we're starting. We're going to try to give Brady Chrisman a little bit of a look as well. He hasn't wrestled because of COVID. He had COVID, so he didn't get to go to West Virginia. So we'll see how he um, wrestles as well this weekend, and we'll try to make a final decision by the end of this weekend because, the, you know, they're all going to wrestle the same guys. I have it right now that they may wrestle at the end of the tournament as kind of like a wrestle off with a referee if we need it. But the goal is to try to find who our best wrestler is there. But I, I James has done all the right things. He's been, he hasn't missed any practices. I think, uh, and like I said, in this time, you have to look at things like that. I think Chrisman has been out on probably three or four two week stints where he's been gone because of COVID either once it was his dad, once it was his roommate, he finally ended up getting it. So he's been he's just been out a lot. So we don't we haven't really seen him that, that much, even in practice this year, because of all the times he's been out. Seventy four. We're going to see McNally. Who are we going to see at one eighty four? Uh, Bates, Tyler Bates. Bates, Sean Andrews guy. Sean Andrews guy. Yep, Marysville guy. He um, won the App State tournament last year. He did he did? And then he just he he was a seventy four pound. He wanted to wrestle seventy four last year, and he just you know couldn't beat McNally. So we bumped him up, and he. he Literally never felt comfortable at 184 if you had a conversation with him. And I think this year he weighed about about almost 200 pounds, you know, coming in. So, so he had a cut to 84. And he actually feels like he belongs at the weight class. And he's a big confidence guy, and I think his confidence is pretty high right now. Um, beat the West Virginia starter last week. Had a, had a really good match against him. Ended up losing to uh, the Virginia Tech guy who was ranked number two in the country, I think. So that, that loss isn't a bad loss. Um, but he had a really good match against the, the, West, Virginia, or the West Virginia guy. And – end up winning. So I'm excited to see him. But like I said, he's beaten, he's beaten starters before. He's beaten the Central Michigan guy who's a starter there. So he knows how to wrestle. It's just with him with confidence and, and keeping him healthy and keeping him and mentally tough, which, you know, with these guys, all our guys is kind of tough during this with everything going on. At 197, will you be releasing the McCracken? Yes. <laughs> Chick is our, we call him Chick, but Colin McCracken's our guy at 197 again. So um, last year. How did year, he do with uh, No Adams? He, he, he wrestled him. <laughs> no, Adam was pretty good. He went at him. He, you know, he went at him, tried to score as many – tried to score. Um, no Adams is good. No Adams was as good a 197-pounder I've seen, and, and uh, he looked really good. So, he, you know, but he wrestled him hard. He gave him everything he could, and, and no Adams didn't win him, but he wrestled him hard. 285, the big dogs. Who you got – who you going to send out? Well, um, right now we have Jacob Cover. Um Spencer Berthold has been medically TKO'd. He was our starter the last few years. Um, he had, has an injury that doesn't believe he'll be able to wrestle again. They're going to kind of give it this year to see, but it's an injury that if I was him, I wouldn't wrestle. I wouldn't try to come back. But we'll see what he, what he does and where he's at in, in six months. But so we're going with uh, Jacob Cover as our guy. All right. So Central Cover, we got we have seven Cover new guys. Central Ohio, right? Central. Yep. 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 Central Ohio. Um, we got seven new guys in our lineup from last year's team, so it's a it's a much different looking team. Um, 
Last week we saw a lot of really – It's this is going to sound like a weird comment. It's the first year in, a, in quite a few that I've seen we lost, but we went out losing, trying things, and with a lot of a lot of room to a lot of mistakes we could take care of. And if, when we take care of those mistakes, we got guys with talent. And which is, you know, last year we had some guys in our in our lineup that didn't have a lot of talent that were just journeymen, um, Simpson and and uh, um, Shane Mass, uh, people like that. Even even Spencer both of was kind of like a two two move wonder. Now we got a lot of guys in there that that you know that are ready to wrestle and they're young and they're, they have a lot of energy. They're excited about it. it they, it's important to them right now. So I think the growth is there. We got a lot of room to grow. And if our guys grow, like I think they can and also have been, I think we'll be a pretty good team. If not by the end of this year, hopefully by next year. Awesome coach. I'm excited. This is going to be on ESPN. I'm doing the broadcast. I'm just excited that we get to do some wrestling uh, real quick. You guys both tested today from what I hear. And then there's another one tomorrow. You guys have another test tomorrow. Well, to wrestle in the conference, you got to test three times per week. So we test Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of every week. It doesn't matter who you're wrestling. Doesn't matter when you're wrestling. Everything left that we have is all conference matches. So we're doing the same thing that that every school in the, in the conference is doing right now. I think Central might be testing every day because wow. the state of Michigan says you have to, to 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 be able to offer college sports. But the the conference rule that we have is the same as the NCA rule, minimum of three tests a week, and that's what we're doing. So we'll test tomorrow morning, um, and then we'll know by Saturday morning, and then everyone that is healthy will get on – or we're actually taking bands over. We're going to get on bands, head over there uh, Saturday, and weigh, two hour weighing because it's a round-robin event, and then we'll start, uh, start wrestling at 11 o'clock. All right, Coach. Uh, this is the first podcast of any type I've shot from the new – I guess office sound room that I'm having created here right now that um, Billy Dickerson is in the cr middle of creating right now. And uh, yeah, I got to show you that's, that's, that's a piece of drywall right there. If you, you can't tell. Uh, did you kick out your kids, make them like room together. So you had your own room or what? Yeah, I got, I had to have my own room. So we made a room. Um, it's little though. It's real small. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be big. Unless I mean, you get bigger. Uh, <laughs> I hope that don't happen. Big Jim. Come on. We're, we're in big trouble. I got bigger fish to fry. If that's the case. All right, here you go. You ready? I'm ready for it. So here we go. Here it is. It's going to have a pocket door. Okay. There's the pocket door. There's right. the lighting system. Yep. There you go. Not very big. Like, eh, I mean, bigger than a walk-in closet or similar to. Yep. And then here you go, Big Jim. That's it. That's the pocket door. We're getting the job done here, Big Jim. Be one of those signs on the outside of your door, so when you're in there, your kitten says, "You know, on yeah, air." Yeah, on air, on air. I'll do the on, on air. air. I'm actually gonna roll with the hippies use the side door. <laughs> That'll be go. the sign I use. So, here it is, Big Jim. You, uh, you're the first first one. I, they were like, "Hey, you gotta check that out. See if you like the space." I like it. Yeah. I'm gonna have a desk, obviously a chair, probably some cabinets. Um, maybe there's a beam above my head here. See that beam? Yeah. There you I might go. hang a boom mic from that um i could mount it it's pretty easy so you got anything else for me big jim you see your uh your your alumni your school the ad is officially leaving kent state kent state our, our athletic director is leaving at, after the year. He's, he's, where's uh, he going do you know he, he just announced that he was looking elsewhere to find employment and just he felt as he felt he did as much as he could at kent state and it was his time to uh to move on and um you know anytime you get a new athletic director to school sport of wrestling you're always crossing your fingers that you get a guy that is knowledgeable on the sport of wrestling or at least respects it and and uh wants the best for wrestling athletes so that's what i'm hoping for i'm with you coach <laughs> you know we're i mean i'm alum i i hope joe nielsen uh he did a heck of a job i will say that he did you guys got better and everything i mean he didn't do a bad yeah. job so um we got to get you a barbarian hour i have to bring you some this is a magnet there's a yep. stack of them okay I got that. Seth, alumni. Or I no, got Go Ohio. I got, yeah, this is yep. brother. And then we got, yep. and then we got the. Probably what yeah, I'll I like be wearing. That. We got hoodies. We got hoodies. And then I got the West Point cap. West Point cap. Barbarian Apparel, Apparel taking care of business here. www.barbarianapparel.com. Jim Anderson, thanks for the time. Good luck Where's to you guys. Stick soap at? What's that? Where's defense soap at? I, I, I. I believe it or not, I don't have any within reach right now. 
I normally have it like on this table sitting next to me. Well, you see this ta- here. Look, 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 look. You remember you did these here? Remember you did those? Yeah, there you go. That's Greg Hines's. <laughs> Why'd you take Greg's? You don't have one. I, I didn't. Ha- I never got one. You never I'll made me one because we didn't get it. Floating around. I'll see if I can dig you one up and put your name on it for a little. All right, bit. coach. I appreciate the time. Stick around here for a little bit, and uh, we'll talk a little bit. But thank you for the time. Uh, Saturday morning, Kent State versus Cleveland State on ESPN three. I want to say it is. Plus, uh, you can catch plus. This is it ESPN plus? It's on ESPN one way or another. I, people yeah. can find it. If they know it's on ESPN. It's on the it app. You can be, get the it search. Be on our website or at least Cleveland State's website. I would yeah, think too. The voice of an angel will be calling the matches, Coach. That's all I can tell you. All right. All right. Stick around here for a little bit. Thanks for the time, Coach. You got. It. Thank you. All right, Coach. I.